Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So, UFC 302 is Saturday. The buzz seems pretty unbelievable. It, it, it really feels like a huge, huge pay-per-view. It feels like a big, big card. And, <clears throat> you know, maybe top to bottom, it's not great. 12 fights, main cards, pretty damn good. You got some crazy-ass underdogs like Zaleski being a plus 130. Okay, Randy Brown supporters, sure. The card is just so much fun. You're going to have a lot of finishes. Besides the Perez-Edwards fight, it's an all-around really, really good card. You know, you even have... Selecki and Dawson who are both coming off of knockout losses but are going to grapple and they're going to be very very good uh, there's going to be very good scrambles Almeida, Kapilov, two really really good kickboxers, one a better blitzer, one needs distance who knows what could happen in that matchup, it could be a crazy three round war, it could be you know, a great combination finish Selecki, you have the, you know, the gritty veteran who's what, 38? At this point, 37, he'll be 38 later this year, finding Randy Brown, who's 33. Has Randy Brown finally figured out that path in his career with uh, his 18th fight in the UFC? I personally don't think so. He's beaten Salikov, who's 40, and Terman, who's crazy inconsistent. You know, did lose the Jack Della Maddalena. People said he looked good early. No. Not really, just Jack hadn't done anything yet. So there's so many different outcomes that can play out in this. I mean, literally, you could get Jake Matthews finally, finally breaking through that that uh, uh, wall that he's been stuck behind and looked incredible against Filio, who's not great, got looked decent against uh, someone's burger and then got hurt every round at the end of every round you have Morono rematching price when price was undefeated Morono beating him up and then getting KO'd against the cage you gotta think Morono is better at this point in his career price is terrible at, th at this point it was never great but had some good moments you know and then Perez Edwards and Perez is two and one Edwards is four and three with some crazy split decision wins. And then you have Andre Lima, Andre Lima, the bite victim of Igor Severino. I think that's his name. Fighting Mitch Raposo, who fought uh, Jake Headley in the contender series. is doing decent before he was finished. But Lima, I have questions about his cardio, but I do think he gets the fight done. Um... We were supposed to have Roman Delizia versus Anthony Hernandez. I really wish they were able to keep Delizia in this card. I think that would have taken this card over the top. Also, I wish they would have kept Andre Lima's last opponent. I wish his visa issues were solved. But then, even if you go to the last two uh, fights, the co-main in, uh, in the main event, co-main Sean Strickland, Paulo Costa, Sean Strickland coming off of a close loss against uh, DDP, who's he's 15 and six in the UFC. Sean Strickland is was actually undefeated in the UFC. Lost his first one against Santiago Ponzinibbio. I remember watching it back in the day. Sean Strickland had long hair. Thought Sean won that fight, but whatever. Fighting Paulo Costa, who's not a great striker, more of a blitzer, um, marauder. I think I guess that's the word you could do is word hasn't necessarily been the same since fighting uh, Israel Adesanya and I, I think that's a really really big thing to talk about you know he hasn't he's what his one win is Luke Rockhold and he probably should have finished Luke especially for how tired Luke was you know being where they were elevation all these things not a great look for Paulo. Almost finished Robert at the end of the first round. Very, very good fight between those guys. But Costa could not hit that second gear. And I just don't think he's well-rounded enough to beat a guy like Sean Strickland. Especially in the striking game. Now, could he get takedowns? Maybe. But probably not. And then 
why we're why I'm doing this video is just this Islam Makachev Dustin Poirier story. It's an unbelievable story. You know, Dustin Poirier fighting Khabib Nurmagomedov a couple of years ago. Now he fought him back in 2019, five years ago. He's one, two, three, four, five, and two since then. Now losing to another type of grappler in Charles Oliveira three fights after Khabib. Beating Chandler by Rita Kachog, losing to Gaethje by head kick in a fight that he was winning, and then absolutely destroying Benoit Saint Denis. Islam is a little bit different than Khabib because Khabib is so hell bent on getting takedowns. If you if Dustin is able to sting and touch up Islam Makachev, he might be able to get Islam to panic, almost like panic wrestle, which. Where Islam's going to be his best is when he's confident and he's looking for takedowns, not when he needs a takedown. I think that's the difference. Khabib, even if he needed a, take, a takedown, I think he would be able to get the takedown. Islam, we've seen him be able to be touched. We've seen his takedowns be stuffed. It, it, has, it has happened. You know, uh, Volkanovski in the first one did very well. Wasn't prepared for the second one, obviously, as we know. He did well against Oliveira. Bobby Green, very short notice. You know, even even Moises was able to survive for a little while. Dobert even survived for a little while. Now, media day, uh, Dustin was told, informed that Islam said Dustin doesn't believe he can win this fight. And I, th I think that's a little, little crazy. Almost like putting Dustin said. Dustin was talking about how if he touches him, he can set him down. That's the truth. If, if Poirier is able to crack Islam, he gets Islam to uh, stand with him for a little bit. He definitely can uh, touch him and hurt him. I mean, maybe even finish him. Now, he can't go one shot for one shot because Islam has some sneaky power. And the, the way that Poirier can win this matchup is defending takedowns, not jumping guillotine. Defending the takedowns. Now you can jump the guillotine when Islam is tired. Sure, fine. Don't do it early. Defend the takedowns. Make him pay every single time he comes in. Every time. Don't look for kicks because he's going to be trying to catch those kicks. But this main event is so, so good. Even though it could be the last win or lose for Poirier. Even though I don't necessarily agree that if Poirier uh, wins, he'll retire. I think that's he's obviously going to want to defend it. Because he understands that everyone thinks if, if you don't defend it, you're not a true champion. Even though, you know, whatever. Because like Forrest Griffin never got to defend, never defended it, lost it to lost it to Rashad. I believe Rampage also didn't defend it. He lost to Forrest. Um, there's been a couple of champions, mainly in the light heavyweight division, that haven't necessarily, you know, like Strickland didn't defend it, lost, didn't retain it. So there's there's some weird weird. Oh, Rashad lost it to Lyoto. Lyoto beat uh, Rua, but people thought Shogun won that matchup. So, yeah. But this, this, this finishing the story with Poirier and Makachev is unbelievable, unbelievable. And people counting out Poirier because Islam is a grappler and Dustin's had issues with that. Makachev's style of grappling is different than Khabib's. There, there. This fight is going to be a finish. I don't see it going to a decision. I want Poirier to win, but I do think Makachev gets it done. Just because he, I think he causes a wild scramble. But we also do have to remember, Makachev does get hit. And if you can make Makachev work early and survive, he does get tired. We've seen it. If he gets tired against Poirier, there's going to be some problems. And as always, guys, subscribe, like, comment. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. 
you got a bit to know, let me know. As always, subscribe, like, comment. I'll see you at the next one. Peace.